composting made easy for everyone. And more donations on food that would have gone to waste. We're talking to Feeding San Diego. Protecting our planet. Coming up in this special edition of Earth 8, everything you need to know about the state's new food recycling law and what's being asked of you. This special edition of Earth 8 starts right now. Right now, California is experiencing a climate crisis. The food and yard waste that gets dumped in the landfill spews out methane, and that's a big part of the problem. Hello, everybody. I'm Nada Irampur. Thanks so much for joining us for the special edition of Earth 8. And over the next half hour, we're going to explain the new food recycling law and the changes you need to make. It all comes down to Senate Bill 1383, so let's first explain what that is. Former Governor Jerry Brown signed it into law back in 2016, but it went into effect this past January. The law requires Californians and businesses to dispose of organic food waste into green bins. The goal is to help reduce organic waste by 50% by the year 2024 and by 75% by 2025. Starting this year, some food service businesses must also donate edible food to food recovery organizations with others than starting in 2024. And the goal there is to help feed people who are in need. According to the state, nearly one in four Californians face hunger. We're going to explain more on this donation process in just a couple minutes. And now to help you visualize what can and cannot go in that green bin, we're going to send it over to CBS 8's Steve Price to give us a demonstration. You've been recycling clean paper and plastic for years, but now every house, apartment and condo complex and business is required to recycle organic waste too. Many have been given an extension to the law that went into effect January 1st, but within two years, those will all end. So how do you separate that organic waste in your kitchen? That's where these bins come in. Some trash companies will give them to residents for free. Others will have to go out and buy one on their own. Many are worried this food waste will smell, but venting on top lets moisture evaporate, reducing odor causing bacteria. They're also easy to clean and the lid locks preventing flies from getting inside. And if you drop it, nothing spills. So what are you supposed to put in here? Well, let's go through my trash for some answers. We're looking for food scraps and soiled paper. Dirty plastic trash bag is still trash. Eggshells, that can go in there. Old onion peels, oh, and a green bean, that can go in there. Banana peel, definitely go in there. More beans with coffee grinds and onions in there. Lots of paper towels. We use a lot of paper towels. Got green beans, onions, eggs. Oh, a whole bunch of coffee grinds. Those can all go in there. Oh, that's a string cheese wrapper. I don't think that can go in there yet. That's a COVID test. That can go in there. All right, so this is the last little bit. How did we do? Let's check it out. This right here is my trash can from inside, and you can see there's it's only a couple of things in here now. It's pretty much empty. And the bin, I'd say a good 80% of the trash that was in my trash can is now in this bin, which means that's 80% less stuff heading to the landfill. And eventually it will be turned into compost to grow more food. So again, what can and cannot go into those green bins? Let's go over it one more time. Fruit scraps, vegetable scraps, cheese, bones and shells, egg shells, toilet paper rolls, coffee grounds, pizza boxes, bread, meat, poultry and fish. Those are some of the things that can go in the bin. Things you should not throw in there, foil, glass, liquids, plastic containers, metal, soil, styrofoam, any other plastic and pet waste. Recycling your food will take some getting used to, but eventually in the San Diego area, you could get fined. In fact, right now, parts of our county, there are people patrolling that food waste. Looking at this pile here, I see already some no-nos. This can, this packaging, not supposed to end up here. Take a look now at some of the biggest offenders. It's a trash job, but this man knows it's an important one. This is all yard waste, it looks like. No food waste, but this is, this is clean. There's nothing wrong in here. He's the environmental services manager for the city of Chula Vista, and we join Manuel Medrano on one of his trash patrols. Eagle County people will be able to put their food waste uh, in their yard container. 
uh, and mix with your yard waste, your grass, your leaves. That's where you could also put your banana uh, uh, peels, your old bread. He's literally so lifting lids to find out what people are throwing out. Recycle and that's because the new food waste uh, recycling law went into effect down. January 1st. So it is fairly new. When we fight, we win. Republic Services, which services Chula Vista, also had that month-long strike during this rollout, which added to the delay. We've been recycling for 30, 40 years, but yet sometimes we don't get it right still. Manuel knows it'll take people some time and he'll keep on trying to teach the rights and wrongs of recycling. When it comes to organic waste, the biggest wrong would be plastics. Here's your, your uh -oh. contamination, unfortunately. We have some flowers probably from Valentine's Day, but this, this, uh, these bags, unfortunately, they say compostable, but they're not. He says, imagine bags going into compost where they get broken down into plastic confetti. That's not going to be good to put back into our soil. Even bags that say compost on them are a contaminant. You could buy these anywhere with that claim, and we don't know really if they are compostable or not. So your food waste shouldn't go into plastic bags, and neither should your recyclables. It actually tangles up in the machinery. But we saw back-to-back -back bins from different homes that must have missed the memo. Definitely this one will get at one of these tags, letting them know that plastic bags, the biggest contaminant, does not belong here. Which is why Manuel is tagging them. These flyers let them know what to throw into the trash bin, the green bin, and the blue bin. Now the goal is to have as little trash as possible, which he has already started to see. But after a Super Bowl weekend, for example, a lot of mistakes are made. Red Solo cups cannot be recycled. These don't belong in the recycling, unfortunately. Those do not get recycled. No. It's like flimsy. Yeah, is that yeah, how you yeah. Gauge it? So he removes the flimsy plastic and then would tag the bin. They also mark their own records to know which houses have been tagged so they can track repeat offenders. For now, these are just warnings or oopsie notes, as Manuel would call them. But by 2024, the city of Chula Vista will consider citing or fining people. People may have to pay the price for any wrongful waste. While that may seem harsh, it's your trash after all, Manuel wants people to keep in mind food waste is a resource. This is the easiest way to for you to do your part to help with climate change. This is the kitchen caddy. This Reducing the food that goes into landfills also reduces the toxic gas or methane that spews into our atmosphere. Plus, your food waste can all go back full circle. Once it's turned into compost, it goes back into our land. It's breaking down in a natural way where then it's used for our, for our land, for our gardens, for our farmers, for uh, where it needs to be, where it belongs, really in the soil and not in our in our in our atmosphere. And with the Otay landfill expected to close by the end of this decade, it's time for cities all across California to clean up their act. Many people are wondering why they're being told what to do with their trash and why they have to make all these big changes. Coming up next, my one-on-one -on -one interview with Mayor Todd Gloria. Welcome back. I'm Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis. You're watching a special edition of Earth 8. And now it's time to test your knowledge and see just how much you know about the state's new food recycling law. So here's our trivia question. Which of these items can go into your green compost bin? Is it A, plastic, B, soil, C, pasta, or D, bathroom tissue? Go ahead and think about it. We will reveal the answer at the end of the show. But for now, let's send things back over to Netta. Carlene, thanks so much for that. And now, a big question so many people have is why are we recycling food waste? So here we are at the Miramar Landfill with Mayor Todd Gloria. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Netta. Why should people start changing their ways? Well, it's the most important thing we have to do. We have to tackle climate change. This is a way to do that. Uh, and importantly, it's now a requirement of the state. The state passed a law, Senate Bill 1383, requires cities like us to come into compliance with green waste recycling. And so we're required to do it, but we should do it in order to protect our environment. So the law voted on back in 2016. A lot of people started on January 1st of this year, but the city of San Diego has taken a few extra months. Explain kind of the delayed rollout. Well, we're a big city, right? Uh, smaller cities can often implement this stuff faster. Uh, we're nearly one and a half million people. We do direct residential pickup of garbage. Uh, and then we've also had the challenges of the pandemic where it's been difficult to buy the trucks that we need, to hire the staff that we need. Uh, we're working through those challenges because we must and because we should. Uh, this is important to the city's future uh, that we do all that we can to protect our environment. So what will this mean for people at home? How will they need to kind of readjust their life? 
Well, they're going to have a kitchen pail uh, to collect some of the waste inside their home, and they're going to have a green can to dispose that into. Uh, and then the city will come along and pick that up just as we pick up black and blue cans today. And then what about apartments, people living in those units? Will everybody be doing this? Senate Bill 1383 applies to everybody. Now, the city doesn't directly pick up from apartments in most cases, uh, but those folks are serviced by other private haulers that also are subject to 1383. Uh, so they will also get on board on a different time frame. Uh, but very, very soon, this mandate is rapidly approaching. And then here we are at the greenery. Explain what's going to happen to everybody's food. Well, so that kitchen pail is going to go to the green can. Our collection folks will pick it up, bring it here. We're going to recycle into high quality mulch. We're going to divert it out of our landfill and you'll see it appear back in the community and landscaping and other places. This is something the city has done successfully for many, many years. We're just going to be doing it on a much bigger scale. So what do you want to say to people who don't want to change? This is one more thing for them to have to worry about. I feel the same way. I, I'm a creature of habit myself, but this is important to change our personal behavior in order to fight climate change. That's the change that we should be really afraid afraid of. Uh, our environment here is what makes San Diego so very special. It's worth fighting for. And so this modest change in your personal behavior is something that can help us prevent bigger changes that we don't want, namely changes to our climate and our environment. Mayor, thank you for your time. My pleasure. And we will be right back with your trivia question. So keep it right here. We'll have that answer for you. Many businesses, like restaurants, are trying to figure out how to comply with Senate Bill 1383. It's no secret these restaurants contribute a lot to the food waste problem. Some have already started dropping off their food scraps at the greenery, where it'll get turned into compost and mulch. I visited a couple restaurants in North County, and they show us how they've been able to change their ways. Restaurants are the backbone of many communities. They bring people together from employees to customers, food distributors and farmers. They lure in tourists and cater to locals. Restaurants help keep our towns running, but it's no secret the restaurant industry can contribute to a lot of waste. People don't always finish their meals. The kitchen may not use up everything they order. And that's why here at Union Kitchen and Tap in Encinitas, they're proud to start recycling their food waste. A little piece that this restaurant can do to, to impact the bigger picture. The GM, Tyler Glick, says as of January 1st, they changed their trash ways. They now have these buckets at various stations, including their bar and bigger ones in the kitchen. It's not a huge challenge. It's not a huge big leap. It's just a way of uh, a, a change of what you do, a, a minor, instead of putting it in this bin, you put it in this bin. When the buckets get full, the person assigned to the station is also assigned to take it out back and put it in the food waste bin. I think it's a great program. I think uh, it's not as scary as it sounded on paper. Once you get into it and start doing it, it, it really just kind of flows with the restaurant. It's not an additional challenge. And Sanitas and other cities like Solana Beach, Oceanside and Vista, for example, are serviced by Edco, which already has a food waste plan in place. I think the rollout has started. Um, it's a little slow because haulers all across the county are operating on different schedules. The Solana Center is helping many of these businesses and homes streamline their recycling. I definitely think that the businesses are excited and a little apprehensive. The main thing is, what do we need to do? How do we not disrupt operations? It does not have to be an extra burden. Good Anya, also in Encinitas, is a restaurant that's been recycling their food for years. That's the green bin that's been going since probably eight o'clock this morning. We really don't throw away a lot. You can see like these are tomato ends and limes and you know, edges of things. Like you're the biggest thing all. in the restaurant is not to waste a bunch of food. Sarah Spry is the executive chef, and she does most of the ordering of food from nearly 50 different local farms and distributors. She has the task of figuring out how much they need so things don't get dumped. But the food they do have to dump goes to the company called the Compost Group. They pick up these two bins out back twice a week. It lowers your impact on the environment for sure, but it also teaches your cooks to just be more responsible. Now it's not just the restaurant staff that is embracing this. A lot of customers here at Good Anya are used to separating their trash too because look, they have the bins ready to go for them. For example, you put your organic waste in this one, your recyclables go right there, and there goes your trash. This has always been a priority for Good Anya. Organic food and giving back to the earth is at their core. Everybody here, absolutely. It is a culture here for sure. He's not in his head, this guy. Yeah, this guy for sure. <laughs> I 
live, I live the, the good on your way. And now this year, most businesses and people all across San Diego will be doing the same. Another big part of the law impacts grocery stores. As you know, grocery stores don't always display fruits and vegetables that may have bruises on them, but that's still edible. That edible food now needs to be donated. CBS 8's Evan Narani visited Feeding San Diego to see how that food is helping those in need. When Senate Bill 1383 became law, businesses and food suppliers were required to recover edible food that would otherwise go to landfills and instead pass it on to food rescue organizations like Feeding San Diego. We have onboarded 15 new food donors and we have seen an increase of about 25% of the pounds that we rescue every month. We are rescuing 1.2 million pounds a month and we are picking up from about 300 different food, grocery stores, wholesalers from all around San Diego County. And that's great news. More food going to residents of San Diego that might otherwise go hungry. But it also means that food won't have the opportunity to rot in a landfill and emit harmful greenhouse gases in the process. It's top of mind now in all of these grocery stores. So if in the past, perhaps maybe the produce and the meat department were the ones that would set aside product for us. Now, all the departments are getting on board. So we are seeing an uptick in the variety of product that we're able to rescue. And just having it top of mind really has helped um, in the overall amount of pounds rescued. With more and more food companies on board, Feeding San Diego is then able to connect with more distribution partners around the county to get food to people's tables before it goes bad. These grocery stores are going through an insane amount of products every single day, right? Yes, so it's they are. not too much for them to, like, it almost helps them out it does. for you guys to say, we can come and grab this for you, right? It does help them out because actually, by law, they are now not allowed to throw away edible food. So by us coming to pick up the edible food, it does help them out. It helps everybody out, right? Not just the grocery stores, but it helps our friends and neighbors who need a little extra food. Cal Recycle says $60 million in grant money will go to jurisdictions that apply and pass enforcement ordinances by the start of the month. Another round of those grants will then go out in the fall as well. O'Connor says in times like these, where people are often stretching their paychecks to go further, these changes are of huge importance. A lot of people are deciding and having to choose between putting gas in the car, especially now, and what types of food they can bring home to their family. So if there's extra food out there, which we know there is, we need to be saving that and distributing it to people in need. When it comes to kitchen scraps, not everyone can collect them and put them in a compost pile. Well, there's a co-op here in San Diego called Food to Soil that makes it a whole lot easier. Coming up on our Earth 8 special. Welcome back. It's now time to reveal the answer to our trivia question. Earlier we asked which of these items can go into your green compost bin. Is it A, plastic, B, soil, C, pasta, or D, bathroom tissue? The answer is pasta. Pasta can go into the green compost bin. Plastic, soil, and bathroom tissue are not acceptable. Thanks for playing, and now we're going to send things back over to Netta. Carly, thank you so much. For anyone who's into gardening, you know this compost is gold. I mean, this was all once food waste, and now look at this. It helps your plants grow. CBS 8's Sean Stiles now shows us how a few San Diegans have come together to create even more of this compost. Over 30% of what ends up in the landfill is kitchen scraps just like this. However, if you don't have space, there's still a way you can end up with beautiful compost. What we have here is really pure. It's just fruit and vegetable scraps plus coffee grounds, tea bags, eggshells, and then wood chips. Sally Tinker and her partner Jeff Smith have been part of the Food to Soil Co-op since mid-2019. People either subscribe with a monthly membership or they have a bucket drop, $5 per bucket um, drop-off situation. Membership is $15 per month. That entitles you to compost. It also helps the atmosphere. And the waste of that food is going into the landfill where the process creates methane that's released into the atmosphere. It takes eight weeks from when kitchen scraps are dropped off 
until it's turned into compost. Here is one 32-gallon cart of food scraps, moisture, vegetation, wood chips. It's the magic formula. 50-50 on the greens and browns, and just enough moisture to keep it cooking. Temperatures can reach 150 degrees. That kills bad pathogens and gets good microbes into the soil. A lot of people do it because it fits with their values. But we produce this really beautiful black compost that's available to our members, of course, at no charge. For Ani Solanke, it's more than just good compost. We know that climate change is real, and, and these are the small ways that we can actually contribute to the environment in a very meaningful way, and it feels really good to be able to do that. The Mission Hills location has taken in 21.9 tons of kitchen scraps since 2019 and turned it into compost, and that pulls carbon out of the atmosphere. We have drawn down as much carbon as 18.4 acres of forest. And if that wasn't enough, it provides nutrients for the plants. Because if you just grow food and don't add to it, eventually you're going to use up all the nutrients and nothing will grow. Food to soil helps make that connection. Composting creates healthy soil. You're directly involved in the process of reducing greenhouse gas. Food to Soil has 17 locations around San Diego, so surely there's one near you or in your neighborhood. And once you start putting all your stuff in the bin, you can start collecting your compost and doing the right thing for Mother Nature. The Otay Landfill has the state's only solar-powered composting facility, which means they're using energy from the sun to heat up all of that food and yard waste, all of that compost underneath the gore tarp, which is actually made of Gore-Tex. Because it gets so hot under there, it really breaks down a lot of this organic waste pretty quickly on the massive scale. So really, instead of your yard and food waste going into the landfill, creating methane, instead it creates this right here, compost and mulch, which can be used for your garden, for your landscaping. So what we're really doing is giving back to our land. Thanks for watching this Earth 8 special.